Hey there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, of course, your Raspberry Pi has a limited amount of storage, initially because it's just the SD card that you plug into the little slot there. Of course, there are ways of expanding the storage. You can add USB devices, USB flash drive, USB SSD drive. Of course, you can always mount a drive over the network. And for example, if you have a NAS, like a Synology NAS, you can connect to it over Windows sharing, which would be using Samba. And as I showed in my video about how you can boot one Raspberry Pi from another, you can also mount it over NFS. There is another way to re mount remote storage to a uh, NAS, like a Synology NAS, and that's using iSCSI. So today's video is all about Raspberry Pis and iSCSI. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking what is iSCSI, look at some of the terminology, what it's all about. Then we're going to go over to a Synology NAS and create some remote storage that can be accessed over iSCSI. And then finally, we're going over to a Raspberry Pi and we're going to connect to that iSCSI remote storage. And then the thing about iSCSI is that it's block level, which means that when you connect to it, it looks like an actual disk. So we're actually going to partition and format the disk. It's not connected via USB. It's not connected by uh, SATA or by anything else that you might have with a carrier board or something, whatever you've got with your Raspberry Pi. It's doing it all over a network. And that is the brilliant thing about iSCSI. OK, let's take a look at what is iSCSI. OK, so we're looking at how to connect a Pi to your NAS using iSCSI. iSCSI, what does it stand for? Well, it's the Internet Small Computer Systems Interface, and it provides block level access to storage over a network. So the Pi sees it just like it would see any other hard disk or uh, SSD connected, and you can partition it and format it and so on. So let's have a look at iSCSI. Welcome to iSCSI. iSCSI provides block level access to storage devices by carrying SCSI commands over a TCP IP network. So really this is SCSI over the internet, over a TCP IP network, hence iSCSI. Okay, so what is SCSI? Well, welcome to the 1980s. Let's do a flashback here. Small Computer Systems Interface is a set of standards for physically connecting and transferring data between computers and peripheral devices. The SCSI defi standards define commands, protocols, electrical, optical, and logical interfaces. It really was the kind of the, the real high speed uh, interface for servers and big computers back in the 80s. In fact, SCSI 1 was published in 1986. And I remember when I was working for Digital Equipment Corporation, when I got a workstation with a SCSI drive in it, it was like, oh, wow, you've got a really high performance uh, system there. So SCSI lives on today uh, in iSCSI. Now, normally when you share files uh, from, let's say, uh, a NAS to a desktop computer, to your Mac, to your laptop, to your Linux, whatever, it's a file sharing protocol. So things like uh, SMB, the server message block protocol, that's Windows networking, basically, the network file system, NFS, they basically are a, a way of connecting a computer to a server, but it's at a file level. So it'll say, hey, what, what files do you have? And then the server will say, well, here's the list of files that I've got. Oh, brilliant, great, that's the files I need. Could you please open readme.txt? Okay, it's open. Okay, could you please send me the first 128 bytes or whatever? And so everything's done at a file level. On the server here, the file system or the actual type of hard drive is irrelevant. It could be running uh, NTFS, it could be running uh, EXT4, it could be running any file system that, uh, that, the, that, the, that the server supports and the client doesn't care about that. It just says, hey, what files have you got? And the protocols, these protocols, server message block and NFS just deal with files and how those files are stored. They could be stored on a ticker tape for all these uh, messages, for all these uh, networking uh, file sharing protocols we care. That doesn't matter. Now, iSCSI is a lot lower level. So rather than dealing with files, it's dealing at the block level. So block access, just like over a physical cable. So almost like the computer talking to a hard drive and saying, you know, what have, in the old days, you know, how many heads have you got and what, how many sectors have you got and how many tracks have you got and kind of trying to access the hard drive at a physical level. So here we are again, here's our client, here's our server. And this, of course, is not the real way iSCSI works, but just let give you the idea of how low level it is. It's like read byte at position 17, what, whatever position 17 is, you know, okay, it's 42, uh, 42 in hex, okay, we'll move the read position to DE77, or, you know, it might be track information or head information, okay, done that, okay, write 
uh, hex uh, for two to the byte at an offset of 11. So it's really, really low level and it's up to the client to work out how the file system is gonna work, how the files are stored, you know, and all the stuff it's doing. Of course, clients like the Raspberry Pi understand file systems like ext4, and so it's gonna basically format the hard drive and access the hard drive just like it would any other uh, ext4 hard drive, but not over a, a SATA cable or over a USB port over the network. So there's a few bits of terminology for iSCSI, which is a bit different to kind of uh, other things, but really it's the same thing. There are two parties in an iSCSI, set up the client and the server, as I was just showing you. Now, the client is called the initiator. So when you, if you read any documentation about uh, iSCSI, it's gonna talk about the initiator is the client and the server, that's the remote storage, the Synology NAS in our example, here is the target. So you have an initiator and a target. Okay, so what we need to do to get this working is four things. First of all, we need to create a target on the NAS and a Synology NAS can act as an iSCSI target as can other makes of NAS, but I have Synology here, so that's what we're going to be using. Then you need to discover and connect the Pi to that target. And we're going to be using Open iSCSI as a package you can install on the Raspberry Pi to do that. Then once it's been connected, we want to format the remote disk because remember, it's just block storage. It's just a bunch of uh, blocks that you need to now actually access just like you would a hard drive. So we're gonna use MKFS, Make Filing System, to create a new filing system. And then finally, I'm gonna show you how you can permanently uh, mount that so that whenever you boot up your Pi, it automatically mounts the iSCSI uh, target and it's available there for you to use uh, on the Pi. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create the target on the NAS. Let's go over to the Synology NAS and do that. Okay, so here I am on the web interface for my Synology NAS. This is DSM version seven. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the SAN manager is installed. So let's go over here to the package manager and let's just type in SAN here. And there it is. Uh, it's already on my system. If it isn't on your system, you need to make sure you install that. Now you can either open it here, or of course you can go up to the kind of the start menu here and just go into the SAN manager. Now the SAN manager has all these different things that it can do, including of course for iSCSI. So you click on the iSCSI uh, part here on the left, and then you wanna add a target. Remember target is that word for that remote storage that you can access from the initiator, from the client. So we're gonna say add and it will give you this thing called an IQN, and we need that, so you might wanna just cut and paste it for the moment, because you're gonna need it later. You can enable authentication, which means only devices with the right username and password are going to be able to connect to this target. I'm not gonna use that because I'm here on my own LAN in the house, it's not a problem. Go to next, create a new LAN, yes, that's what we want, and then finally, you basically get to set the size, so I'm gonna call make 128. Uh, gigabyte. Now there is a thing here, you can either basically use thick or thin provisioning. What it basically means, thick is it'll create 128 gigabyte file now on your uh, NAS and that will get used, or thin basically means it grows in size as the, the, the storage gets used up. Obviously, if it's thick, it's much faster. If it's thin, it doesn't use up as much uh, disk space. I've got several terabytes here on this drive, so 128 gigabytes is not really a problem there for me. And where, well, I've only got one volume on it, so I've only, it's on those hard drives there. So we click next again. Here's basically the summary of what it is, and then we just click done. And there we go, now under the iSCSI tab, in fact, under the uh, overview, we can see that we've got one uh, set up here and uh, we, could, we can edit it and so on. But again, this is the thing here, this IQN, we need that when we go over to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now we need to do steps two, three, and four, discover and connect to the target, format it and mount it. So we can do all of that over on the command line on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so here I am over on my Raspberry Pi. The first thing you need to do is install the iSCSI um, package. So of course we want to start with an, a sudo apt uh, update, make sure all the list to the repositories is up to date. And then after that, we want to do an apt install open SCSI. So while that's happening, just let me point out that I have or all of these commands listed inside of a document that you can read over on my GitHub repository uh, in case you don't catch the commands here in the video. And I'll give you a link to that in the description. So if you don't see the exact command, brackets and slashes and things, you know, that's gonna be there uh, over on the GitHub repository. Okay, so the open SCSI package uh, is installing. 
Okay, so that has now installed. So the first thing you do is edit a file called uh, slash etc slash uh, iSCSI slash initiator name dot iSCSI. That's a configuration file. And basically we go in here. Now you notice here, here was that uh, IQN and it's different every time it gets created. So we want to add in the one that we created a moment ago. And if you remember, we cut and paste that to the clipboard. So there it is. There is my target name. And then in Nano, all you need to do is do X and Y to escape from that. Okay, so that's the first thing. There's a second file that you may want to edit. And this is etc slash iSCSI slash iSCSId.conf, iSCSI daemon, the server, the configuration file. Now, basically, if you were using um, authentication, you might need to go down here to the chat settings and you're going to change here the username and password and so on. Now, we didn't use that in my setup, so I'm not doing that. If you do, you need to uncomment some of those there, uh, including this one here, uh, type of authentication and the username and password. Uh, sorry, it's this one here, isn't it? Not that one, that one here and this one here uh, to get that working. Okay, so that's just in case you use that. Now, another thing you need to do is go to the part of the file that says startup settings. And by default, the uh, iSCSI is set to start up manually. That means that you have to actually issue some commands to get to reconnect to the uh, sessions and basically to the iSCSI target. We want to change that to no dot startup is equal to automatic. That means it will reinitiate those requests to the i. Uh, SCSI target when it starts up, which means you can then kind of mount them uh, remotely, which we'll do in a moment, and everything is there at a, at a reboot. Now, once we've done that, best thing to do is restart all of the services. So it's system control, restart iSCSI daemon, and open iSCSI. Now, here's the first thing we need to do. We need to use a command, the iSCSI uh, admin command, that's this one here, and we're telling it we want to discover what's available out there, and particularly on this node, 192.168.1.04, which is actually the IP address of my Synology NAS. Now, the important thing is you must always use the sudo command in front of this. Some of the commands will actually work without it. But the important thing is, is that the database that it creates, the current status, is on a per user basis. So if you use sudo now, you have to use it all the time because it's as root it's storing this information. If you run it then without the sudo command later on, it, you won't see the same status information. You won't see the same discovery information, which we're about to see, because it's now running under the Pi user. So always remember to use sudo at the front. Let's run this. And there we go. It said there, yeah, hey, I can see that. There's my, uh, my NAS with that that IQN that we talked about. So it's discovered that. So that's really good. In that case, then we're going to say, well, are you sure you've discovered that? Show me. So this is the iSCSI command again, show, and it will give us all, all that information. Look at that. So it's very happy that it's found that. So that's really good. And then what you need to do is you need to log in. Now, if we were actually using the username and password, like we said, then the actual login would be a proper login. In this case, it's a connect because it's without any authentication, but you still use the login command. And so it's now trying to log in. Now, on my one here, it does actually try to connect over IP4 and IP6. So here you can see the IP4 address, and here you can see the IP6 address. Uh, one of them works and the other one doesn't. Uh, and I haven't spent too much time debugging that, but basically it will just time out in a minute, but it will still connect using IPv4. Okay, once the login has completed, we can show uh, that we have an established session. So it's iSCSI command, M session and show as the command. And here it tells us that it's connected over IPv4 to that target, which we set up. So everything is brilliant. Now, at this point, the hard drive on the, that block, that fire, that target we created on the uh, NAS will now appear as a hard drive here on the uh, the um, the Raspberry Pi. So we can check for that. One way is just to do a D message and grep for SCSI. So we can see that it has uh, access, look, there you go, to the Synology storage. So that's good. We can actually look to see if there are any devices, any hard drives been added. And so we can look for SD. And here we can see we now have an SDA, something you don't have. And look, it says an attached SCSI disk. Of course, uh, SD is SCSI disk. And in fact, even SATA drives and so on connect that way. But that's a whole different story about how Linux um, block devices work. Uh, and then, of course, if we do a cat of 
slash proc slash partitions. We can see here at the end, we've got SDA and it's, it's 128 gigabytes. So there is now a device that it thinks is like connected physically, an SDA device connected to our Raspberry Pi, which means we can now partition it and, and format it. So I've got a whole video on how to partition and format a disk in Linux over the command line. And I will leave a link to it in the description below if you want to have some better background on how all this works. Basically, we're gonna do, I'm gonna use FDisk, other people like to use Parted. You can use whatever tool that you prefer to use. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new partition table, a GPT partition table, which is now empty. We're gonna do N for a new partition. Yes, number one, take the full size. And if we now print it out there, we can see we have a Linux uh, partition. 128 gigabytes and it's SDA1. And so we just write that back to the hard drive and there it is, it's up and running. So then the next thing you need to do after that is you need to make a file system, format it in other words, we partitioned it and now we format it. So format it ext4 and notice we're using SDA1, one because that's the partition we've just created. And that will go ahead and create the file system on that. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could mount that hard drive. So let's create a mount point, uh, mkdir minus p slash i scuzzy mnt. That's just where I'm gonna put it. And we can do a sudo mount slash dev slash hda1 uh, on i scuzzy mount. And if we do df minus h, there we can see it is at the very bottom. Here it is absolutely mounted, 126 gigs there. And we can go to slash i scuzzy mount. And there we go. We can. Uh, touch gary.txt oh don't have permission <laughs> okay sudo touch gary.txt there we go all right so that's it you can start to use that now if you want to mount this all the time when the machine builds up two things we need to remember one is that the iSCSI remembers what it's logged into so you don't have to keep doing all that login stuff it remembers what it's logged into it remembers what's there because obviously iSCSI is designed to be something permanent you don't keep connecting and unconnecting hard drives all the time. So you won't want to do that with a network. So when it comes up, it, it says, okay, I need to connect to that. But at the same time, it can't come up until the machine is fully booted, your Pi is fully booted and all the network is running. So what we need to do is we can't mount it in the FS tab file. There's probably a way to do it, but the easiest way to do it is to mount it later on. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a file called static sector slash mount SCSI, so sudo nano etc slash mount SCSI. And inside that file, all we're going to do is we're going to uh, run a shell script. We're going to sleep for a minute. So once this runs, it will wait for one minute and then it's going to mount slash SDA1 on uh, iSCSI mount. And all you need to do is to save that. We also, of course, need to give it uh, execution permission. So we do sudo plus x slash etc slash mount iSCSI so that it, it can execute. Now there is a file called slash etc slash rc.local. This script is executed at the end of multi user of each multi user run level. So basically, once it gets up to running full time, it will run uh, rc.local. Uh, and as you can see here, I've already got something in here that I do to set up uh, a VNC server running. Now, what we can actually do is we can edit that file. So sudo nano slash etc slash rc dot local. And down at the bottom, but before the exit zero, what we want to do is we want to add a line that says this sudo slash etc slash mount iSCSI dot shell and run it in the background. Uh, and that's it. So that will now uh, run when the thing is rebooted, it, it, when it first reboots, when it first boots up. So if you reboot now, it will come up, it will wait one minute, and then it will try to mount that uh, SCSI thing. And then you'll always permanently have it here on slash uh, iSCSI mount. Okay, so there we have it, how you access remote iSCSI storage from a Raspberry Pi. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, you can stick around by hitting that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Gary Explains. And don't forget, I do have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just a newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.